about fakirs, yeah, about uh, Sufis, masters, yeah, about Islam, a great uh, wise men, a prophet, etc., etc., yeah. Uh, and uh, the master, or the Sufis master, they uh, they use also parables to talk to their disciples. Yeah, as you know, men. If you use sometimes the conventional means, the brain immediately <laughs> like shut down. I say, no, I heard like that. I did not hear like this. You know, kind of uh, they will have a kind put up of a resistance. So most of the master they use parable parables, yeah, uh, liken a situation and to something, and telling a story in order to drive home some spiritual point, yeah. So if they talk about roses, it's not really roses they're talking about, yeah. If they talk about beautiful girls, it's not really beautiful girls that the Master are interested in <laughs> or have in mind, yeah. <laughs> or even if they talk about uh, excuse me, <laughs> sexual problem or, or, or jokes. That doesn't mean the master want to talk about that. Yeah. So what I'm just trying to tell you that uh, in the old time the master used all mean. You know, it depends on the level of the disciples. He will use that mean to teach them. Yeah. Yeah. Because some people don't understand anything else if he's uneducated. Uh, at the case of uh, the old time, many people illiterate. Yeah. Even nowadays, still have some illiterate people in the world. It's a sad thing, but it's the truth. Yeah. So the master has to use all kind of means to drive home the spiritual point. Yeah. Because he make it interesting, so that the disciple listen. That's all. Not because he love uh, sexual jokes or things like that. Oh, mind you, is also. Not that, no, not the whole book <laughs> about sex or job, just uh, here and there, yeah? And that's enough to surprise me already. <laughs> Even I was surprised. I said, ha, huh? <laughs> that, <laughs> and they still print it here, you know, as a collection of a joke or a stories from one master or another master, yeah? Uh, up to now in this book I haven't found any yet, <laughs> so <laughs> it's easy for me, yeah. Okay, so what I mean is, uh, the master can use many means, yeah? So if you don't know and you don't like it, just don't judge, yeah? All right. Just for example, uh, one master in the Sufi's order, yeah? Uh, yeah, he, uh, it's just a parable, it's not the real thing. He's supposed to ask every of the people who come into his house or into that house to smell the rose, they have, they have beautiful rose in the garden, in the corner, and then tell everybody, go there to smell it, yeah, and describe what it is in two words only. And some people say something, some people say all kinds of things. The only the one who says is a rose. <laughs> and he can stay in his house. And everybody else who doesn't know anything about it or who write nonsense, uh, then uh, cannot stay. Miss the mark, you know, miss the point, yeah? Therefore, um, when a master talks about rose, it's not exactly the rose, okay? It's not about the rose that he talks about. It's about to drive home something, yeah? Okay. There's a man who planted uh, an orange tree, yeah? It happened to be these orange trees a very special orange tree. They produce fruit. Uh, it produces fruit only uh, every 30 years or 20 years, a very long time. After 30 years, uh, maybe they have fruit. So everybody tells him, Ah, what kind of uh, orange that you plant? What for? You are already halfway to, through your life. Uh, you never know if you live until 30 years to eat this fruit, no? Why do you plant it? Yeah. Uh, and this person happened to be uh, the chief of the priest, you know? So, so the man who planted the orange said, Oh, yeah, I know that. 
But uh, who knows, maybe I live until 30 more years to eat the orange. Or maybe, at least, you know, my descendants, yeah, my successor will be able to enjoy it. So what's the harm, you know? No problem. Okay. And then this uh, story, you know, came to the, the king's ears. Or he also came and have a look at the orange, and he also said the same thing. What for you plant the trees in your old age like this, in your middle age, past middle age, and you never know if you will live until 30 years to eat it? So the man answered the same. Yes, uh, maybe, uh, who knows, maybe I live until 30 more years, or at least my descendants will enjoy it. And the king agreed, said, okay, who knows, okay. Just in case I also, you know, the king, will live <laughs> for another thirty years or more, and you still live another thirty years, both of us, maybe, that long, uh, long-lived long people, then could you please uh, bring me some of these orange if it bears fruit? Yeah? So the, uh, uh, the man, of course, said, yes, it would be my honor and privilege to bring it to you. Uh, thirty years later, truly the orange tree bears fruit. So the... Uh, the man remember, and he took a basket full of it. Yeah, cover it well, clean and nice, and bring it to the capital. Yeah, and uh, there he met the the chief of security and said that the king has wanted some of this, so I will, I bring it to him. So he uh, reported to the king, and the king said, Oh yeah, yeah, ha, good man that still remember me after three year, uh, thirty years about what I wish. Good subject, <laughs> good citizen. So I'll reward him abundantly with a lot of gold pieces. Yeah, and he enjoyed the orange. It's very special, sweet orange. When you eat it, you feel very, very uh, energetic, very spiritually elevated, and feel very happy, contented. It's not just an ordinary orange. That's why it took 30 years <laughs> to bloom, I guess. That's why it's a very precious orange. So, okay, said and done, he took his go, and the king took his orange, and everybody happy. It will happen that there's another woman nearby his house, and he saw what he does, yeah? She saw what he does, and she also wanted to offer the king some orange to get some gold. So she took some of her ordinary orange in her <laughs> yard, put it in the same similar basket, covered it well the way he did, and brought it to the capital and demanded to see the king and, and to get the gold. But the security man knows all about it, you know? So, of course, he doesn't let her in. And he, she came home with her own orange and complaining all the while. How come orange and orange? What? <laughs> Why I don't have any gold? And that man <laughs> have a lot of gold like that. She complained, complained, and complained. Yeah. Because she was so angry and uh, concentrate on gold only, you know? She even forgot to ask the, the special orange planter what really happened. So she keep complaining, complaining all the time, all the way. <laughs> Everybody knows about it. <laughs> but the truth is, it, is a, it was a special orange that the, the man offered to the king. You understand me? Yeah. It's similar. The master used this to point out to the disciples that methods and methods are different. Yeah. Maybe you think you belong to this and that order or that religion, but you don't have the essence of it, yeah? You don't have the lineage of initiation. You don't have the power connection to God, and that's not the same. That's not the same, yeah? So no matter how many oranges you have, it's not the same as the one specially cultivated, uh, bloom only thirty years. Precious, you know? Precious, yeah. The same. Uh, the master wanted to say that the method that he introduced to his disciples at that time, you know, the Sufi master, that was a precious one. It might look similar <laughs> to any others, also like religious, a uh, five commandment or ten commandment, or be good, do good, and all that. Yeah, but it's not the same. Yeah? Uh, you might have a 
a bank account, but it's empty. <laughs> oh, only a few dollars in it. And you, another guy might have a same bank, yeah, similar account, but we, we, he has a million dollars in it. So when he write a check, he write big. You see what I mean? Confident, and people trust it. But when you write a check, no matter how many zero you put in, <laughs> it doesn't help anything, does it? Uh, you might write the same, uh, you know, <laughs> number two, and put the, uh, you know, like five zero behind it. It makes no difference. It looks the same check from same bank, same amount, same number, but it don't produce anything. Similarly, if we do not have a fortune of meeting a real living master with a real living, uh, how you say, um, a lineage, you know, real living connection with the divine power, then no matter how long we sit, uh, no matter how much charity we do, it amounts to not much. Yeah, it might keep us uh, morally okay, high. Yeah and uh, maybe people will praise us for being charitable. Yeah. And we might feel that, okay, we are very charitable, charitable and spiritual person, but feeling <laughs> it's, uh, it's not the same. And uh, so some of the humankind, many of humankind are deluded into thinking like that. There's no connection. Then there is no connection. When there is no electricity in the house, even the plug look the same, yeah, and the outlet look the same, <laughs> the cable look the same. It's not the same, yeah? Electricity is not connected. You know that or not? Yeah. The telephone is the same, but it doesn't work, yeah? Because it's not connected. It has to be connected. Either the electricity already in the house, or you have to plug it in. Yeah. You know that joke about the 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 new uh, commander of the army, huh? he went into his brand new office and uh, I love it so much, he got, got promoted, you know, and feel very grand. And then suddenly somebody like a nobody come in with, you know, crumpy clothes and dirty, oily clothes, come in his office uh, and uh, and he want to impress that guy, you know, so he pick up the phone and say, oh, Hello, Mr. President. <laughs> How are you? You know, everything is okay there? Of course I come visit you, <laughs> sir. <laughs> and, and then he keep blah, blah for a while. And then he turned to the dirty uh, clothes looking guy and said, And you, hey, what do you want? Uh, sorry, sir, I came to connect your phone. <laughs> Remember that joke, huh? I told you a long time already, no? I remember very well. Such joke you won't forget. No? <laughs> so it's just a show. It's just a show, a pompous show, if we don't have substance. Yeah. The light and the sound of God is the only method that we should connect. Because that's the real thing. It's not even a method. If we're not connected with the light and sound of God, if we're not connected with God, then we're not connected with God. <laughs> yeah. no, no matter what we say, what kind of clothes we wear, how beautiful clothes or, you know, traditional or not traditional, or how many attendants you have around to make it look good, and uh, how many people come and listen to you, or how many people worship you, or how many people donate to you, it makes no difference. At the end of the day, if you're not connected with God, you are not connected with God. Right? Yes. Now, you know very well the difference, right? Yes. Okay. So similarly, the other day we talked about NQ. Eh? Uh, what is NQ again? Anybody know? I'm all I forgot. <laughs> what is it? Noble quality? <laughs> okay. Wow, you have better memory. Good, good. At least you have some memory. <laughs> okay, so noble quality is the same. The other day we voted. Not voted, but I inform you that India was the most, the noblest or the most noble. What is in English? The noblest, right? 
the noblest country uh, at the moment on our planet. Yeah. And you have voted for so many countries, <laughs> others, which is fine and good. Yeah, I told you I'm glad that you saw the positive side of every other country that you suggested, that you, you guess that it might be the noblest country. I was very happy that you even noticed yeah, that the positive side of the people and the goodness of their countries yeah, and the noble point of their citizens. I was very happy. But no country has beat India yet. And the mark is so high. <laughs> you know, the runner-up is <laughs> very <laughs> far behind. You understand me? Yeah. It's not to say, not to praise one country to another. I'm not even India, Indian, you know that, yeah? And I don't speak with that accent. You understand? <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, <laughs> so I have nothing to do with India. It's just the information that I got from heaven and I told you. Just for your information. It helped you nothing. Hmm? It helped you nothing to know that Indian, <laughs> India and Indian people are the noblest people or country in the world. It doesn't help you at all. Yeah, we have nothing out of it. It's just information, just like many other information. I whatever I know, I tell you. Yeah. Sometimes uh, we could share it with the public. Some other times we could not. Yeah, because uh, maybe some of the public people are not ready to receive it. So some we keep. <laughs> yes, I don't know if we announce it to the world, people, other country will be offended or not. Yeah, maybe we let them know. Maybe not. Yeah, but okay. The thing is, because why did you suggest many other countries? Yeah, because you saw some sparks of noble quality in them. That is fine and good. And it looks similar to India, perhaps. Yeah, also look like very devoted to God. Yeah, and look like a very charitable, very spiritual, aspired. You know, but this might be copy. You understand me? Or maybe tradition to help, maybe uh, because have a lot of money, yeah, maybe a good leader, yeah, to direct all this money into helping other poor country. And that's very good for that country, uh, uh, good for the, that president or the good premier, yeah, good uh, PM, yeah, uh, prime minister, okay. But it's not necessarily of the whole country consciousness. You understand me? Yeah, or people sometimes people do it out of okay we have to you know the church say we must be charitable yeah uh, the temple monks say we have to be good yes so they try that is very beautiful to try at least you try huh but the inborn quality of the Indian are different they are not copyable you understand me not copy they just do it like they breathe. Yeah, like they comb their hair, like they bath in the Ganges River. They don't do it with any motive at all. They just do it because it's just inborn in them to be good. Do you understand me? And even their country are poor, they still keep whatever the tradition, beautiful because they can't help it. If you come into their house, they just have to serve you. They just have to cook for you. They just have to treat you like a king, king because that's the way they are. They do it with their heart. So this thing from the heart cannot copy. That's what I mean. Even if there is another country do exactly the same action like the Indian people do, so they still do it. It's still not the same. You understand the copy and the real. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that's why other countries cannot <laughs> match up to it. What you do out of uh, learning or out of... Uh, order or out of uh, tradition is not the same, yes. Maybe in that country there are some good leaders, you see? So they, uh, the leaders uh, teach the citizen or make an example or govern the citizens well so that everybody go toward that goal. So they use a public fund or anything at all to, to, to help other poor people or mobilize the whole country to become uh, religious adherents of one religion or another religion. But it's not the same as people are born with it. 
Nobody had to tell them anything. They're born into it. And they just have it in their gene. Do you understand me? And the people who are the same quality, of course, will be attracted again and again to India and be born there. <laughs> Therefore, the whole country become that. So, you can't copy it, yeah? Just like if uh, a person who is charitable from the heart and she or he very, very uh, conscious of the suffering of others and anything she or he would do in her power or his power to elevate the suffering of the people, they do it with heart, you know, any time. It's different than the person next door who saw him doing it and tried to copy it, but not the same feeling, not the same concern for the suffering of other people. But nevertheless, the copy is beautiful. Yeah? We have to start from somewhere. We have to learn from somewhere. So examples are extremely good. So uh, even the Indian people, they don't go out and teach anything, but many people go to India to learn, you see that? And emulate their kindness or their uh, hospitality. Of course, people don't write the record about it, yeah? <laughs> But they do. Many people do go to India and then feel the goodness uh, spread also <laughs> into their being, and then they go home and do the same. Yeah? Of course, it's not as good as the original, but it's very good. You see what I mean? Yeah. That's why India and not other country. Now you understand. It's not me who has chosen it. I did not <laughs> even think about that before I know that. You see? It's just that it comes to my knowledge, so I share it to you. It's not me who is the judge. How can I? What for? <laughs> what for I choose India over the uh, United States or, you know, Germany or whatever? Why? Why? What, what for I do that? What can the Indian people give me? Chapatis, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you see the, the, the fairness of it? the objectiveness, eh? so you know that. Uh, because everything I said to you and do, it's just very objective, yeah? very fair and just, that's why you trusted me. Yeah? Otherwise, uh, how do you think, why? Why, Master? Why India? My country is better, you know, we give billions of dollars to charity, you know, we go to Africa and have this and that. That's fine, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. But it's not only a money that we're talking about. Money is easier to give. You see, like for example, I give money to charity, or I give money so the disciple go out, you know, your brother and sister go out and help the poor. But I respect those people who go out there and help, you know, directly. I wish I could do it myself too. But it's not my direct job, you see. So it's not like I give money and then I feel proud about it. Okay, I'm the one who gives money. No, no, the one who goes there to the direct area and give it to direct the people, they are the great ones. Yeah. So money is not everything. Yeah. But of course I have my feeling with it too. It's not like I have so much money that I can just throw it out like that. It's not really because we, <laughs> we are not a charitable organization, I told you. Yeah. We just give what we have and with our honest earning. Yeah. I wish we could give more, you know? But they're better than nothing. Yeah? In some poor country, if I give 30,000, it amounts to like uh, almost half a million or more than half a million. Do you understand me? Then, for half a million dollars equivalent in America, you can buy a lot of stuff. So don't just say, okay, I have only 10,000. It's not too much compared to. For example, Bill Gates giving 10 million. Don't compare. Do what you can. You're not Bill Gates. You see what I mean? Do what you can. And I don't do it as a soul donor to the disaster victims. I do it in the knowledge that I'm just doing my part. Everybody else do my part. Can you imagine if, if many organizations, each one give only $30,000, the victim will be singing already. Yeah? Singing praise of God already. Yeah? That thing is miracle that God bestowed on them. Don't you think so? So, of course, it's not like I give everything or I know everything or I help everybody. It's not like that. We're just doing our part. Yeah? And that is, uh, if everybody do their part, then the whole world is never in trouble of any kind. And, you know, like, 
even if 30,000 buy something for people, maybe they live well, one more day more or two more days, now wait for the big the thing to come. You know, like a big Red Cross, United Nations, or big country, powerful money, uh, Mongol, to come and help them. But they have to live meanwhile first, to wait for these big helpers, you know? We are not a big helper, of course. We are just doing something, what we can. And that helps them to survive for a while until some better things come. That's the idea, you see? Yeah, I wish I could be also the big thing, <laughs> a big helper. Yeah, but uh, sometimes it's not always a good thing because if you are a big organization, sometimes it takes so long also and a lot of red tape and bureaucracy and not necessarily the victim get it directly and right away. So we just go over there and give it directly as much as we can, yeah? Like in Vietnam we say, một miếng khi đói bằng một gói khi no. That means you just give me a morsel when I'm hungry, better than you give me a big bag when I'm full. Yes, because that morsel will keep me alive for a while until I'll be able to stand on my feet or until somebody else, uh, stronger, more powerful, come along and help me. See what I mean? Without that muscle, maybe I die already. And it's too late for the powerful and the bigger helper to come. I'm dead. You see what I mean? So it's good we do our part. Yeah? And uh, even if we copy Indian, fine, just do copy. <laughs> do copy. Yeah. Maybe I'm only copy Indian. But in my heart, I feel the suffering of the people feeling. The more you practice, the more sensitive you become. You feel the bro broken uh, arm of an ant. You feel the broken wing of a moth. Do you understand? That's why we cannot kill. Not that we don't kill. We can't. We feel. What if feels? How can we do it? You see what I mean? Anything make me suffer. If I see them suffer, I suffer. Even an ant or an insect that happened to fall on the ground, I would lift him up and say, you go out there, it's better for you. Yeah? Very gently, so that he won't die. His life is precious. He lives only half a day. That's all he has. You know, life is precious to him. So any insect or anything, we cannot kill because we know he hurt. You see what I mean? It's not like you don't kill, you can't. <laughs> you cannot do it. You cannot bring, bring yourself to do it. And that is a natural law. It's not like Master Ching Hai imposed it upon you. You don't kill. You don't hurt other beings. You just can't. Yeah? Maybe in the beginning you, you say, okay, Master say I don't kill, so I don't do it. But later on, as you grow up in spiritual practice, you just can't. Even if I don't tell you, anybody else tell you to kill for your survival, you cannot do it. It just become you. You awaken within yourself the greatness, the nobility that you have it. Yeah? That is God-like. So, this is a real thing then. Yeah? This is a real Indian. Okay? <laughs> you will all become Indian. <laughs> With all different color, white, black, yellow, red, uh, half white, half red, <laughs> half black, half white, you know, like a zebra. <laughs> yeah, I rem remember that joke, yeah, about, about the, 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 the black and the white kids uh, live next to each other, black and the white neighbor live each other, because uh, a white, a white kid just moved to the uh, black neighborhood. Not really a black neighborhood, but it happened that a couple of uh, black person, family live nearby. So he, he first time he saw a black, you know, kid, you know, <laughs> four years old. Said, mother, why is his skin so black? It don't look like my skin. So mother said, oh, because their parents are black, honey. That's why they, they are born black. Just like your parents are white, you are born white. Ah, the kid understood. And one day the mother took him to the zoo, he saw the zebra. <laughs> Black, white, striped, you know? <laughs> so he said, ah, mother, I know. If, if a white father or a white mother married to a black <laughs> parent, 
then the child will become like that. <laughs> Stripe, you know, black, white, black, white, black, white. <laughs> yeah, the child, the child understands everything. <laughs> he said, yeah, he has a black parents and a white parents together. I know. <laughs> the zebra must have, you know, half black and half white parents. <laughs> ah, that's so funny. Okay. <laughs> So we have to become like Indian, you know, Indian people, by heart, eh? Okay, yeah. It's good that they, they are there and keep their beautiful tradition yeah, for you, for the people to, to, to know about it and to emulate. But mind you, not everybody can see that from India, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Evidently not. Huh? Only one of you say Indian. No? Everybody else vote for Canada, United States, Germany, you know, the powerful area. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's very good that you see the positive point. But India is India, okay? And uh, nobody can surpass that and nobody can emulate that. And I hope the Indian people continue to live their tradition. No matter how poor they are, they are extremely rich. Yeah. When your heart is rich, you are truly rich. Money don't mean much. Oh, it does mean something. Well, if you can use it to help people and to nourish your family, that is something. Yeah? Of course. But it, it too shall pass. You know that already. Yeah? <laughs> Richness, poorness shall pass. If we don't take good care or if it's our karma like that, it shall pass. Yeah? Or you give it away, also you don't have. Yeah. So anyway, it is good that the Indian people do what they do and continue to live the way they live. Even in their poor country, they still live the same tradition. Uh, did you read one of our magazines in, in, in which one of our Kwani messenger report about one uh, village in Rajasthan? That they're very poor, but they have a, a house there for the guests. Whoever go there can stay for a while and have a full boarding and lodging. Yeah? And they have nothing there, just desert. Water is even rare. But still the hospitality don't die. Yeah, the same. I mean, that is an extreme area, yeah, with no water, because it's a desert, Rajasthan, you know. It's, it's a desert-like kind of area, and very hostile-like environment. But the people's hearts are gold still. So you do understand this? It doesn't have to be money. But they do do that. The whole village put money there so that there is a hotel exists. I mean, Talking about hotel, I know what that kind of hotel is. You, you, they on a mud floor, of course, and it's a mud wall made with uh, cow dung and mud, and it's a thatch, you know, roof. Oh, I live in many of those hotels in India. <laughs> yeah, they don't charge you anything. They don't charge anything, and uh, of course you can't stay forever, eh? Yeah, everybody understand that because you have to move on, huh? It's just for passing by travelers. You can stay three days or one week. And then you have to make room for somebody else. It's not like the villages are not hospital, but people passing by, you have to go, no? It's a hotel, okay? <laughs> it's not uh, your house, no? And you don't go there to live in a hotel forever, of course. But if you do, I don't think they throw you out or anything. It's just that everybody understands. You are a mendicant, a mendicant, you just go there, you take the hospitality if you don't have, and you go move on. Now that's why I told you at one time the government of India tried to limit the influx of tourists and the Western or not, because they go there, they don't understand it. They say, oh, you know, everything free. Oh, I don't want to stay longer. Or keep going in a different area, you know, and just stay free like that. It, you can do that, but you cannot stay too long in one place. You can move to the next village and stay in the next hotel for another few days, continue forever. And they always feed you and welcome you like they have never welcomed anybody like that in their whole lifetime. So even in such a small, dirt poor village, you know, no trees, not much, and no, no water, they still hospital. And in the remote regions of uh, Himalayas, which I traveled before, they have such hotels everywhere. Oh, they don't even call it a hotel. I don't know what they call it. Maybe guest house. Yeah. You can come in and stay free. Yeah. 
and uh, have meal also. I mean, very simple, you know, like the way they eat, dye and rice with salt in it. Yeah, that's it. But you, you fall. You have enough nutrition to go on. Yeah, they have what they they give you what they have, no? And in many places, you know, of course. I have learned that if I have money, I give, you know, I give at least the basic, you know, the, the, the cost of it. Not more, but I give. But I didn't have much money, I tell you, of course, yeah? Wherever I go, if, you know, if I take something from it, I give some money. <laughs> yes, because I know it's for the next one, you know? For most of other India who are poor, who went there for pilgrim, I could afford it. You know, so they can repair the roof or do whatever for the next customers. But they don't expect anything from you. That's the point. Yeah. You know, it's nice to live in a thatch hut, you know, because India is very hot. If you live in a concrete building, oh, it's, it's too hot. Yeah. Mostly they use a thatch hut, you know, and mud to make a mud house. We call it mud house. You know, we the tourists, the spiritual tourists call it mud house. <laughs> And it is a mud house, all made with mud, you know, and straw, whatever they can find in the region. Okay. So Indian people are truly remarkable. They're truly hospital. It's not just a gesture of hospitality. They are hospitality. They are it, you see. They give you with the heart. Huh? They never think of counting of anything, you know. Uh, one time I was, uh, you know, I went different places and studied with so, so different teachers, you know. One time I am with one teacher, yeah, one master of India. He passed away already. And, uh, and then uh, I went somewhere. But just like you, you went somewhere and stay in a, another initiate's house or another center like that, you know. And sometimes you contact person, you know, you go there because you travel, happen to be nearby and you pass by and you overnight in their house or stay a few days. Or the contact person would just receive anybody anytime they come. Every day they cook me the best food ever, you know, the same with the family. It happened that that family a little bit well off. Not that, not really well off, but compared to India, they're okay. And they just go and get vegetable fresh every day and cook every day. Yeah. And then I said, Oh my God, this is a lot of work for you and your wife. He said, No, are you joking? This is an honor I would never dream of. Yes, like receiving people <laughs> of that master every day. Can you imagine? It's not because the master taught him that. It just, it's just him, it's just her, it's just the Indian people. They're like that. So if everywhere you go in India, you, you can see this kind of hospitality everywhere. Okay? So the Indian is like that. But of course, uh, some, you know, there are some rotten apple everywhere, yeah? But mostly because maybe they learn it from <laughs> so-called foreign culture. I'm so sorry to say that. Yeah. Because in the old time, 100% people in India are vegetarian. And slowly, slowly, all the all foreign influence come in. And now they may be only maybe 70% are vegetarian. Yeah. And their hospitality uh, go down to 60%, you know, the NQ. Before it would be more. Yeah, but never mind. Yeah, everything changed sometimes. Still, with all these changes, you know, with all the war before, with all the occupation, with all the influence, they still maintain the 60% nobility of the collective consciousness the whole nation. Do you understand me? Yeah, this is really amazing. Yeah. I don't really love Indian people. I mean, not love like love or anything. I just really respect them a lot. In fact, I don't know, I just don't feel much. I just, I just tell you the truth, the fact like that, yeah? But of course, in my heart, you know, I feel reverence for such a race of people. If they have a lot of money and they're a rich country and they do such thing like a mud house hotel, then it's, we would not be so surprised, yeah, and amazed. But their country are very poor, a lot of poor people. But you see now, they're not poor that much. Of course, there is still a gap between the rich and the poor because some people live in remote area and there's no access, no no chance they become rich or anything. But now the Indian people, according to statistics, 
have more, more million more billionaires than the rest of Asia. Now, you know that it's all on fly news. <laughs> yeah, I was the one who found that down. <laughs> You see what I mean? So, even in the material sense, God also returned them the favor. Hey? Who knows, in, after a while, all the Indians become well-to-do and all have enough everything to eat. You understand me? Okay, wonderful. Very good. You're very smart. Any question? Spiritual question, curry question, anything. <laughs> Yes. In India, there were always the first noble, most noble countries there. It was always like this? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. For the other country now, they, they set like an example. I mean, other countries, they should. Yeah. Need that or not? Invisibly, they set an example. But people are slow to learn. <laughs> everybody applauds a hero, but not everybody wants to become a hero. That's the point. That's the main point of human. We all know all these great teachers, great example of kindness and love, but how many of us emulate it? How many of us want to be the same or do the same? At least even to copy. You see, yeah? human learn too slow. That's why Indian was the top high, and the second runner up is. It dropped very <laughs> a big cliff between them. You know what I mean? I wish I didn't have to say that. It's not my statistic. It's statistic of the, 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 the truth. You understand me? Yeah, okay, even if uh, people don't believe, they can go research and they will know about it. This we can even prove it. Yeah? It's not my statistic. I didn't have to do research anything. I just see it with the inner vision, that's all. Okay? I didn't even think about looking for that. It just come out. Sometimes you meditate and information comes out. Okay? I did not deliberately want to look for India to praise her or to, to make example, nothing. No, it just come out of a meditation information uh, database. <laughs> Any more question? Good question, good question. <laughs>